YouTubers, welcome to our channel Tech Geek, and today we will see how to verify email addresses with Java. So why we need this service? Suppose you have a website and you want to make sure that your subscribers provide valid email addresses. So how to verify that? You can use syntax validations, but syntax validations does not always help. Because suppose somebody is providing abc at the rate of 123.com. This is syntactically correct, but this email ID actually does not exist. So how to verify that? For that purpose, uh, we are using an API here because the actual process of email validation is a bit complex. It involves a lot of steps like SMTP check. You can create one database that contains all the blacklisted domains and like that. So instead of writing entire code, what we can do, we can uh, use an API and get the response from the API. So I will be using this API name as mailboxlayer.com. So I find this API one of the best API available because they provide 1000 email validations free for per month, right? If you want more than 1000 email validations, you can purchase their plans also. So I am using one free plan and that supports 1000 email validations. So what you have to do, you have to just sign up to this website and they will provide you one API access key. So this API access key is crucial because, because every time you need to access the API, you need to pass this API access key. So what you have to do, you just need to copy this API access key, paste it here. So I have already created one project because writing the entire code now uh, will make this video unnecessarily longer. Right. So just go through this code. So there is a method, check email, and we will, we will be passing one email ID to this method. And this method will display whether the email ID actually exists or not. So for that purpose, the first step is creating the URL, right? So this is the API URL as you can see. After that, we are passing the parameters like this one, the access key and the email ID that we want to validate like this. So once you are done with this URL, the next step you need to create the URL object. So this thing will return the URL object and from this URL object, you have to get the connection. So I am using HTTP URL connection. You can use Apache also, um, but I, I find it easy. So that's why I'm using URL connection. So the next step is from the URL object, we are getting the connection. So URL object dot open connection will return the connection object. So I'm holding this data in this con variable. So after that, you can set the request method. Uh, this is not mandatory for get because by default, the method is always get. And for post, you need to write post here, right? Okay, then I'm setting the request property in the connection object with the parameter user agent and the value is Mozilla Firefox or whatever you want. You can write Chrome here. And that this step is important. From this connection object now, we are getting the actual response from the API. So whenever we write connection.get input stream, it will pass all the properties that we have written so far to the API and it will get the response back. So we will holding this, the response in this buffer reader, right? So this buffer reader in is holding the entire response. Now our task is to traverse to this, through this uh, buffer reader and uh, store it in somewhere in a string buffer. So I have defined one string buffer response and I am appending each and every line in the response in this string buffer and ultimately I'm just printing this response. So this is just a basic way of using HTTP URL connection. The first step is to getting the connection and from the connection you will be getting this connection dot get it for stream that that is the response from the API and after that we will be traversing through the response and we will get the data and we will store the data in a buffer and finally we will be printing this buffer. So let's test this service. So let's validate with this email ID. This is our method. I'm passing this email ID and let's check whether it exists or not. So this is the response from the API. Let's paste it here. Uh, we will be analyzing this response one by one. So 
So as you can see here, the SMTP check is true. So what this SMTP check actually does, it sends a test email to this email address and see the response. And uh, as you can see here, the response is true. So the email was sent successfully, right? And finally, the score, the score is 0 0.8. So anything that is equals to or greater than 0 0.8 is good, right? And also the SMTP check is true here. So from these two parameters, we can conclude that the email ID actually exists. Okay, so now let's test with an invalid email ID. Let's change. Let's change this one. Okay, so abc at the rate of 123.com. So let's see how our API responds. we got the response so as you can see here the SMTP check is false and the score is 0 0.16 so anything that is below 0 0.8, I already told you, can be considered as a false email ID. So 0 0.16 and also you can see, you can see here the SMTP check is false. So that, that also shows you that this email ID actually does not exist. So from these two parameters, we can conclude that the email ID is a false one. So for now, what we have seen is we have got the response from the API. And by manually seeing the response, we can conclude whether the email ID actually exists or not. If you see carefully, the response is in JSON format. So to use this response in your program, you need to par parse this JSON message, right? So for now, it is good for manually validating, but to validate it via your program, you need to parse this response and get each and every parameter in your Java code itself. So to do that, we need to parse the JSON using Jackson library. So I will be putting one uh, video that will show how to parse the JSON response in Java, right? So, so that is how you can validate one email ID. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. And uh, I will be posting that uh, JSON parsing stuff also. So please subscribe to our channel and till then happy learning.